Welcome back. I'd like to uh, do an example of the analog low pass filter uh, to illustrate the, the design process. This filter uh, is a, it's got a format called sail and key. Okay. And it uh, is a template uh, such that whenever I put in an R, I'm going to put it the same R over there. Uh, this one is going to have a 2C and this one's going to have a 1C. Now in the book it puts a reference right here. I'm just going to ground it for today. Okay. Um, uh, a sidebar from building this, uh, it turns out that uh, from capacitor rules, uh, it is once I have a, a C in my hand, okay, once I can go to check out and get a C, it's actually very easy to get a 2C. You're not, if, if you can get buy, build, steal, borrow a capacitor of a certain value, you could easily buy, steal, or borrow a capacitor of 2C. Huh? Put them in parallel. Okay, so it turns out this filter, when we actually build it, is going to look like that, where we now have three capacitors of the same type, okay, and two resistors of the same type. That's why this Butterworth filter is going to be so easy to actually build. Okay, Butterworth. Okay. Uh, this particular uh, this particular um, filter with the capacitor at 10K and the, um, and the, um, the, sorry, the resistor at 10K and the capacitor at 141 microfarad will actually pass a cutoff frequency of one radian per second. Okay. And that's pretty slow and not useful. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, design a low pass filter and so we're gonna pick a number Right, so if I'm interested in passing 0 to 10 hertz, okay, what sampling rate would I need according to the Nyquist theorem? 20 hertz. 20 hertz is enough, but is that the only? I have to do 20? No, I could be faster, 100 hertz. Yeah, let's go with 100 because that's the math that I've already figured out. Okay, <laughs> I like that guy. He's a plant, you know. It's always somebody in the audience willing to <laughs> tell you what you want to hear. So I'm going to sample at 100. 20 would have been fine. Okay. So now I'm going to choose a low-pass filter for anti-aliasing. Okay. And I'm going to reject uh, zero, uh, one half FS, 50. I want to pass. Um, I want to pass uh, zero to 10, and I want to reject 50 to infinity. That's my plan. Okay. So I'm going to choose a cutoff frequency of uh, 25, say, and hope it passes most of 0 to 10. And so in order to understand how this works, you have to remember the fundamental computer science thought about cutoff frequencies. Okay? They're related to R's and C's in what manner? Just, and when we look at the formula and we see cutoff frequencies, the, the place where it drops to one half uh, the square root of uh, two, or one over the square root of two. Right? There's a formula that relates R's and C's and F's. One over two pi F, one over two pi RC, okay? Because RC is in, in seconds, uh, one over seconds is in hertz, and that gets rid of the, the radians, okay? So uh, in order to change this um, this circuit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the capacitors by, um, I'm going to divide the capacitors by, uh, uh, <coughs> okay, 2 pi 25, okay? That's what I'm going to do, okay? 141. Uh, divided by 2, divided by pi, divided by 25, okay? And I get 0 0.8976. And I go, so I go to the checkout and I said, give me, uh, 
you know, give me an 897.6 nanofarad capacitor. And you know what they're going to say behind checkout? They're going to, eyes are going to glaze over and they're going to look at you funny. Can't get one of those. So you go, well, what am I going to do? Okay, I'm going to go back to my rule and say, well, you're going to go, well, what do you have? Okay, again, this is the C, right? This is the C. Um, and so what, what do you have as well? We got some 0.22s, okay? Let's say if this guy here, if I were to use a 0.22 microfarad and I still wanted 25 hertz, well, how might you get there? Using my magic formula over there. Change the resistor. Okay, so now I'm going to get my calculator out, divide those two, right? So if I make, uh, just a sidebar, if I make the capacitor smaller, what do I got to do to the resistor? Bigger. Okay, so I'm going to take 0.97, what I do, divide by 0.22, okay? All right, which is about 4, by the way. Multiply it times 10, and I'm going to now ask for a 40.2. 80 oh, K resistor. Okay, so now, okay, fine. So you go back and get some 0.22 microfarads, three of them, right? And then you go, uh, well, what about, you know, do you got any 40.8s? And they're still going to look at you funny. Okay, so then you go, um, I'm, I'm thwarted. I'm thwarted. What if? Yeah, well, okay, so what do you have, right? You go back to that E12, right? Remember that E12, E24 thing? And I say, well, I got some 39Ks. Okay. What would happen if I put a 39K in there rather than a 40.1? Okay. And again, I go back to my formula, okay, and say if the, if the resistor was smaller, what would have happened to the frequency? would have gone up, right? So I'm going to take 25 and multiply times that ratio right here. 25 times 40.8 over 39. That's why I brought my calculator. Okay, divide that by 39. Okay, and multiply it times 25. And you go, hey, lab partner, I know you wanted... I know you wanted a 25 hertz Butterworth low pass filter, but what if I built you a 26.1 hertz Butterworth filter? Okay, and I would contend for the purpose of 445L, where I want to pass 0 to 10, I want to reject 50 to a million, a billion, right? That these two filters are identical in their ability to pass the signals of interest and reject the signals. Okay? So unless you're doing RF, you know, antenna frequency and you got to get the FCC off your back, it probably doesn't matter whether your filter is 25 hertz or 26 hertz. Okay? So this is the design process that just takes a couple of calculators. Okay? Questions on this? If it's not on the second quiz, it will be on the final. If it's on the second quiz, it may not be on the final. Okay? So you should be able to do this, uh, do this design. All right. Questions on this one? going to require a calculator, clearly. All right.